I paint not because I want to, not because I'm good at it, but because it is what I must do, what I live and breathe, what I was made for. This is the very first quote that I highlighted in this book, An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. And it literally was just the first quote that spoke to me. And after finishing it, I didn't realize how much weight that quote held for this book. I went into this book with very little expectation. I was visiting my family for the holiday week. I knew I couldn't start A Court of Wings and Ruin because I wanted to give that my full attention. And I just wanted something like fun and simple to read. And this is a YA fantasy. So I was like, great, let's do it. It truly was that. And I didn't think that this book would melt my heart as much as it did. And it made me LOL a lot. Half the time my boyfriend's like, what are you laughing at? And I was just like, oh, say things. <laughs> and there were also a lot of characters that made me ache deeply for them. So in this story, fair folk are fae in Margaret Rogerson's world. And the fair folk are in love with craft. Craft literally being anything a mortal can make with their hands and has uniqueness and beauty due to their individual skill and their point of view on the world. But craft can only be done by mortals. And the other complication in this world is that mortals are really the only ones who can truly understand emotion and properly process it. They can, but it gets really complicated and messy quite quickly. And they're also technically not supposed to sort of hold human emotion in them, which again is also complicated and messy. Thus, this actually makes the fair folk envy mortals like a lot to the point that they hoard craft, which is basically materialistic items. They hoard dresses, jewelry, plates to the point that they are so old because they've had them forever that they cover them in a glamour so they look brand new, but if a human touches it, you pretty much just see it rotten and moldy and destroyed. And normally when I read fantasy books, I'm like, I want to be immortal, that seems so cool. But this book actually made me feel great sadness for immortals in this book, specifically due to this tragedy. Why do we desire, above all other things, that which has the greatest power to destroy us? This is said by Gadfly. He's from the Spring Court, so he is fair folk. And he's talking to Isabel, and he's just sort of recognizing that like the things they love the most is can actually destroy them. Like They're literally not even meant to do craft because it can be harmful. The emptiness I've glimpsed within your kind frightens me more than death. That quote is said by Isabel, and you technically can become a fair folk in this world, but at a great cost, which I won't tell you because that'll be a spoiler. As I mentioned, Isabel, she is actually our main character of this story. And she is an artist, and so many fair folk come to her because her craft and what she's highly skilled at to the point where she's kind of at the top of the list is she is amazing at making portraits for fair folk. And she has made a living off of that to protect her family. But what Isabel taught me while reading this book is how to stay true to yourself and to accept change. That you yourself can change and it can be scary, but you can still trust yourself as you're changing and things around you are changing. Essentially, every good book, their main character should have an arc. And as Isabel's going through her arc, she is questioning herself and trying to figure out, can she trust herself? And Rook, oh, I love Rook. He is a prince of the autumn court and he has been sent to have his portrait done by Isabel. And this is on the back of the book, so it's not like a giveaway, but essentially every enchantment has a price. Isabel is a prodigy portrait artist with a dangerous set of clients, the immortal fair folk. But when she receives her first royal patron Rook, the autumn prince, she makes a terrible mistake. She paints mortal sorrow in his eyes, a weakness that could cost him his life. Furious, Rook spirits Isabel away to stand trial for her crime, but something is seriously amiss in his world, and they're attacked from every side, forced to depend upon each other for survival. Their alliance blossoms into trust, perhaps even love, a forbidden emotion that would render both their lives forfeit. What force could Isabel's paintings conjure that is powerful enough to defy the ancient malice of the fairy courts? Rook is like so charming. I love the way that Margaret wrote Fair Folk and then how that came out in Rook specifically. And his flaws, essentially Fair Folk flaws, made him that much more adorable and lovable, even when I was irritated with him just as Isabel was. <laughs> but Fair Folk can't lie about literally like anything, not to like give anything away, but like when he's trying to compliment her, he sort of says like how he hates how short her legs are, but that's his way of complimenting because he's learned to like it. <laughs> and again, he's struggling with expressing his feelings at the same time. <laughs> but he is able to come to terms with change a bit more than Isabel. 
At first it frustrates him, but he seems to lean into it more and accept it because it kind of feels like he has no other choice at this point. And he sets the example for Isabel and he never forces her into anything unless she wants to. So he just sets an example for her. And he respects her choices that she makes, which leads me to this is not your typical love story. Isabel is a team player, but she also knows how to protect herself. In the stories, maidens drink poison and jumped from high towers upon hearing of their prince's death. But I wasn't one of them. I still wanted to live. So I think if you're looking for a super fun kind of dive in YA fantasy, this is definitely one for you to check out. It's really cool. The author has two other books where they are set in the same world, but they're not connected. So they are kind of like standalone fantasies. And then she has a novella coming out next year that is actually connected to her other book, Sorcery of Thorns. So I'm excited to check out other books by Margaret Rogerson. I feel like she's very good at intricately painting the surroundings and the details details of the world where you feel like you're fully flourished into it and then you also just feel all the emotions while you're reading the book and especially feeling like the pain and sadness that Isabel feels for the fair folk because of how tragic it is to be them but you kind of have to read it to understand it so I hope you will if you've read this book let me know in the comments if you've read something like it or if you have a YA fantasy that you think I would enjoy please let me know down in the comments and uh, we have a discord now so if you haven't joined the discord make sure you check that out the link is in the description below there will be another A Court of Mist and Fury video. I said I would do a second one. It is coming, but I had no chill and I really needed to start A Court of Wings and Ruin. So reactions for that are coming soon because I've already started reading and I'm so, I'm, I love these books. I love them. SJM is the queen. She's amazing. Obsessed, utterly obsessed. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.